Amen. I'm going to be preaching today uh, out of the book of Acts mostly. And uh, we've been in a series here at Fountain of Life. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And I'm uh, grateful for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And so this, we're gonna, we've been talking in particular about what is known as the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, there are a lot of people who really have never come to understand the biblical truth, the biblical power, the biblical understanding of what the Scripture calls the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you, Jesus told his disciples to go wait in Jerusalem, right? He said, John baptized you with water, but in a few days you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to be talking about that today. And as a part of that discussion we've been having over the last two or three weeks, listen, we, we have to talk about the role of speaking in other tongues, all right? And so this morning I want to talk to you about understanding the role of speaking in other tongues. And for many of you, this may be the very first time you've ever looked at the Word of God to try to grasp and understand what this is all about. And uh, it, it can be interesting, uh, to, to say the least, but unfortunately there's a lot of confusion uh, in the world today about this area of speaking in other tongues, all right? And uh, a lot of people would say, that's just a little weird. That's strange. That's almost cultish. That's where I kind of, I don't understand all that stuff. Well, let me tell you, all you've got to do is understand the Word of God and I believe that God gives us explanation for these things. Amen? Amen. So listen, we're going to, you know, this is a message that you may have to ponder a little bit, okay? You may have to think about it a little bit. You may have to dig deeper a little bit. And uh, that's a good thing. In fact, if I can get you to read the book of Acts this week, I'll be a happy man. All right? And so uh, the New Testament church opens with the Holy Spirit baptizing 120 believers with an endowment of supernatural power. And uh, at that moment, they began to speak in uh, what's known as other tongues, languages that they did not even ever understand or learn or know. And, uh, and uh, so let's take a look at what happened on that day. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 4. It says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And uh, this was an empowerment from God. And the Scripture says that they began to speak in other tongues, in languages that they did not know. Now, on this initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they spoke in languages that the people around them understood. As you read the rest of the chapter, you'll, 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 you'll grasp a hold of that. But uh, everybody still didn't grasp what was going on. And so I wanted to jump down to verse number 14. And we're going to be coming back to some of this in a moment. Acts 2 and verse 14 says this. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose... Uh, they must. They actually thought they had been drinking, uh, says, so, since it's only the third hour of the day. But then he said, "This is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel." And he goes all the way back to the Old Testament, and he pulls from the Old Testament, the book of Joel, and he begins to explain what was going on. And uh, that's what I want to do today. All right. For those of you who've never been around the church or a ministry that believes in speaking in other tongues, I want to explain to you, at least so you can have an understanding, a spiritual understanding of what, what is all of this about? Why, you know, why are people doing that? Okay, and so the first question that I have is this, why tongues? Why tongues? Uh, let me just say that I'm not God. <laughs> Pretty obvious, right? I'm not God. 
But God is God, and God gets to choose to do what He wants to do. Am I right? I don't get to tell God, this is how I want it. I get to submit to the God and say, okay, you do what you want to do. If God decides one day that he wants to take the grass and make it bright red with purple spots on it, he could do that. Why? Because he's God. Am I right? But And I sometimes marvel at the audacity of modern day believers who kind of think that we can pick and choose the portions of the word of God that we kind of like and, and in a sense kind of invent our own God. Let me tell you something. We don't get to do that. How many of you realize that God is God? He gets to do what he wants to do because he's God. Uh, and, and I really can't argue with him. He is God. Okay, so let me give you a second reason why God chose tongues, all right? Secondly, God chose tongues because the tongue is hard to control. I just wonder today, is there anybody here who's honest enough to say, there was a time or two I said some stuff I probably shouldn't have said. Come on, that's me. I got both my hands and both my feet raised, all right? Uh, so so in the scripture tells us that the tongue is the most difficult member of the body to control so if you can control your tongue you can control the rest of you right does that make sense james chapter uh, james chapter 3 verse 5 and verse 8 says this likewise the tongue is a small part of the body but it makes great boasts but no man can tame the tongue it's a restless evil full of deadly poison. You can read all about the tongue in the book of James. And if a person can control their tongue and what they say, they are a very spiritual person, okay? And I think that God chose speaking in tongues for this reason. Because it is somewhat symbolic of what the Holy Spirit wants for all of our lives. If we can yield our tongue to the Holy Spirit, which is the most difficult member of our body to yield to, to Him, how many of you realize that our hands, our feet, our actions, all of those things, they can be yielded to the Lord as well? How many of you tracking with me today? Okay. So God chose the most difficult member to yield supernaturally to the Lord. And so someone asked me a question one time. They said, well, does, if someone speaks in another tongue, does that mean that they can no longer use their tongue to curse or say something evil? And that I would have to say, absolutely not. How many of you realize that we have a free will? We can do what we want to do. We can say what we want to say. And the Holy Spirit does not violate that. To be Filled with the Holy Spirit is absolutely nothing like being filled with a demonic entity. How many of you ever, uh, I hope you don't watch those kind of crazy movies about demon possession and all that, the exorcist. And, but you can read about it in the Word of God. And let me tell you something, the devil is not a gentleman. The devil takes control of a person. He grabs a hold of their mind, grabs a hold of their tongue. He speaks through that person. And I've dealt with some demon-possessed people. I, I know what I'm talking about, all right? And, 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 uh, but let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit does not do that. You see, God wants us to choose Him. You say, what is, the, what is the greatest value that God has? Let me tell you what it is. God wants for you to choose to serve Him. How many of you agree with that? God loves that we choose to serve Him. And that's why He wants for us to choose Choose to yield our tongue. Choose to trust in Him. Choose uh, to, to, to do those things. And, and, and so uh, th those are some of the reasons why that uh, God chose tongues. And then uh, I think that God has a sense of humor. How many of you think so? I think He does. God chose to take what was found as a curse in the Old Testament and turn it around and make it a blessing in the New Testament. I think he just did that because he could say, wow, look what I can do. You know, hey, you know, uh, he was showing off, all right? That's our God, all right? Some of you may recall that in the book of Genesis, all the people spoke the same languages, all right? The same language. And so they had rebelled against God. God said, look, go and multiply, replenish the earth. They said, no, I don't think we're going to do that. We're going to build a tower. It's going to reach all the way into heaven. And God said, oh, yeah, watch this. And so all of a sudden, everybody began to speak all kinds of different languages. And so they had to scatter out, join one another's groups. 
groups and go all over the earth like that. And so what God did in the New Testament, he said that, and that, by the way, that was not a blessing for the people. That was difficult for the people, right? But God took that same thing and he turned it around. What was a curse in the Old Testament, he made a blessing in the New Testament. All right. And so those are some of the biblical reasons, perhaps, why God chose tongues. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, you, when you get to heaven, you can talk to the Lord about that as well, if you want. And I probably won't make much of a difference at that point, right? 